Today's video is all about running an Agno project with Docker Compose. We'll walk through what Agno is, what's involved in setting it up, and then show how Docker Compose can simplify and speed up the process in just a few easy steps. So, by the end of this video, you'll see exactly how quick and hassle-free it is to use Compose to work on an Agno project. Let's go ahead and take a look. Before we get started, you'll want to make sure that you have a couple of things installed. First, have git install, which you could install from here for your appropriate computer. Next, of course, you need to install Docker. I have the Docker desktop install, which I downloaded from over here. Also, you'll want to clone the repository composed for agents that we'll be working with, where you have a variety of type of frameworks. And you'll want to make note that if you are running some models locally, you'll need a laptop or workstation that has a GPU. And if not, you can always use Docker Offload. And in order to do that, you'll want to make sure that you sign up for Docker Offload Access here in their beta program. Agno is a full stack open source Python framework for building intelligent multi-agent systems that combine memory, knowledge, and reasoning. It supports everything from single agents with tools to fully deterministic, stateful, agentic workflows. For a real world analogy, imagine a logistics company using Agno to build an intelligent delivery assistant that optimizes routes and tracks shipments, agents reasoning over real time data, collaborating to keep packages moving efficiently. But in that real world scenario, what's involved in setting Agno up to be able to do all this? You'd have to install Python and set up a virtual environment, of course, install Agno, choose and configure a language model provider, be it OpenAI, Anthropic, or something else install and configure tool dependencies you'd have to create agent objects configure tools memory reasoning layers write and run deployment scaffolding maybe like a fast api server and then handle environment variables dependency versions etc lots of steps and each of these are manual and can be error prone especially wiring together models tools dependencies environment configurations and runtime orchestration and here's where docker compose comes in because it is a tool for defining and running multiple multi-container applications using a simple declarative compose.yaml file. You describe your services, how they run and how they connect, then just start everything with a single docker and compose up command. More documentation on docker compose can be found right over here. Our Agno project is designed to work together to analyze GitHub repos. Let's go ahead and take a look at our YAML file to see how it's configured. First up, we've got the agent service. This is where the actual agents run. It builds from the agents folder, opens up a port for communication, and loads in a file that defines the list of agents. By default, it connects to a small model so that the agents are ready to handle tasks right away. Next is the agents UI service. This is the front end interface you'll interact with. It's built from the UI folder, opens up port 3000, and talks directly to the agent service. This gives you a simple way to visualize and interact with what the agents are doing. Finally, there's the MCP gateway. Think of this as the secure bridge. It manages secrets, connects to other servers, and even adds a formatter that makes outputs like GitHub issues easier to work with. At the bottom, you'll see the model section where small and medium models are predefined with recommended sizes. And lastly, a secret section which safely pulls in your environment settings. Now for our Agno project in our Compose for Agents repo, you'll want to file the requirements and make sure that you do have a laptop or workstation that has a GPU. If not, you'll need to use Docker Offload. And equally as important for this particular project, you're going to need to set up a personal access token so that it has access to your repo that you wanted to assess. And in our case, it's gonna be my GitHub repo, particularly this repository right here for c -sharp Design Patterns Part 1. And I went ahead and created one simple issue that we're going to want to have our Agno project retrieve. When you do set up your personal access token, if for any reason this first approach at the beginning of number two doesn't work, make sure you go ahead and try the alternative. And of course, if you're using Docker Offload, definitely you'll want to export your .env file. 
other than that we can go ahead and execute docker compose up so to kick things off we'll run docker compose up and then we'll have like the images build along with the pencils being downloaded i did speed this up for editing purposes but once that's done i can hop over to port 3000 and then actually test the agents one of them is a writer and by choosing that i can give it a command like to summarize the issues for the repo reynold adolf c sharp design patterns and then you'll actually see it in the terminal as the results come up and if you put it side by side with the ui the results will be there also matching of course in a more readable fashion now once that's done if i want i can go ahead and change the agent instead of a writer i could choose the issue retriever and give it a command like list the issues in the repo reynold adolf c sharp design patterns and likewise in the terminal when the results come up you can compare it side by side with the ui and there you go if we look we could see that is exactly the issue that i had when we compare it to what's on github now this was a very simple example just to show that the project is functioning but of course much more sophisticated requests could be set up so how does the agno project actually work when you run it with docker compose imagine you're the user you start by asking a question about a github repository maybe something like what open issues need fixing that request goes through the agent ui which is like the dashboard where you interact with the system from there the request is handed over to the coordinator agent think of the coordinator like a team manager its job is to decide which other agents should handle which parts of the task. The first specialist it calls on is the GitHub issue retriever. This agent's role is simple. Go out and fetch issue data from GitHub. It does this by talking to the MCP gateway, which is basically a bridge to the official GitHub API. Once the data comes back, things like issue titles, descriptions, and labels, it's ready to be processed. Next, the coordinator brings in the writer agent. That agent's job is to take all the raw issue data and turn it into something useful. It sends prompts to the Docker model runner, which in this case, is running the Quinn 3 language model. That's the brain that helps generate summaries and organize information. The writer agent works with the model to draft a structured markdown report, which neatly categorizes all the GitHub issues. And finally, everything is passed back through the agent UI, so you as the user see a clean, easy to read report instead of a messy pile of raw GitHub data. So the flow is, you ask a question, the coordinator agent assigns tasks, the retriever agent fetches issues, the writer agent summarizes them with help from the model, and you get back a polished report. This setup is powerful because all the moving parts, the UI, the agents, the model runner, and even the GitHub API are orchestrated automatically by Docker Compose. Instead of manually wiring these services together, you just run one command and the whole pipeline comes alive. And that's mainly it to run an Agno project using Docker Compose. Let me know in the comments how you would use Agno or if you've ever used it before. If you found this video helpful, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button to get notified for our videos on the horizon. And if you got value out of it, also make sure to check out this video here. Thanks for joining and I'll see you on the next one.